Blessed Savior, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. We pray sincerely that uh, your spirit may guide us. We plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Greetings and blessings to you, brothers and sisters, colleagues and friends. May the Lord truly bless you. I'm Kudza, your host, and this is the Herald Report Ministry. On this blessed Sabbath, we are looking at character formation. We are looking at tribulation. We are also focusing on the great multitude. You know, yesterday, as I was talking, or probably a few hours ago, I used a statement, heaven is easier when we get there. Now, the book of Revelation gives us an understanding of the struggle between the forces of good and the forces of evil. That's why, actually, when you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, we have got this thing of the great controversy. And in the great controversy, we go through serious challenges. We go through trial. We go through pain. We go through sorrow. And this is how our characters are formed. In fact, this is how all the impurities in our lives are removed in the process of refining. It's important, brothers and sisters, that I mentioned from this onset that while all these problems, all these challenges are happening, God is controlling the temperature. God is controlling how these temptations are coming. So remember last week we spoke about the 144,000. We focus on the ceiling of the 144,000 and we emphasize the importance of the character of the 144,000. It's only those who have a character of 144,000 who enter into heaven. So as the 144,000 are sealed and they are ready for salvation, then John said in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9. After this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number. So this great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongue stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which seated upon the throne and to the Lamb. So this crowd no men could number. Now they are standing before God. They have come from different nations. They are wearing white robes, verse 11. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. So now you realize that, you know, this big crowd, they only worship the God. There was only God to be worshipped. But now the question will be asked, in verse 13 regarding this crowd the bible says and one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes whence come they and i said unto him say thou knowest and he said unto me these are they which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb so now they are arrayed in white robes and they've washed their robes in the blood and the robes have become white the question is what exactly are white robes and how do we obtain the white robes i want to take you to the book of zechariah chapter 3 verse 3 looking at the story of joshua the high priest as he was about to offer sacrifice the bible says now joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel and he answered and spake unto those that stood before him saying take away the filthy garments from him and, uh, and unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will close thee with the gum change of raiment. So now the Bible says uh, to Joshua, who was being accused by the accuser. Now God is saying, take away the garment that he's wearing, the filthy garment, and give him the white robe. I've removed his iniquity. I've paid his sin. He has been purified. And as a sign of purification, he has been given a new robe, a white robe. Now, verse 5, the Bible says, And I said, Let them set a fair mat upon his head. So they set a fair mat upon his head and clothed him with the garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord stood by him. Now, why? was he given a different robe what we actually see from the story of joshua is that he was wearing a robe which was filthy and this filthy robe was filthy because of sin and he had to remove that robe and he had to be clothed 
with a different robe altogether. So white robes are given to those who have overcome sin or to those who have been forgiven. Then they are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So what is sin is not their condition, but the condition of Jesus Christ. White robes are given to the people of God as a gift because they have accepted Jesus Christ. They cannot attain the righteous themselves, but this is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which just comes as a gift. Now the question is, what makes somebody to qualify for the white robe? You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So if we overcome, then we will be given white raiment. So the qualification to receive a white raiment, the qualification to receive this robe of righteousness is actually overcoming. Without overcoming, we may not, we may not, we will not receive. Now the question is, why do we need to overcome? And what exactly is the content of the struggle? And now, do we have a picture of those that have overcome? What would they overcome? You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 15 from verse 1, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous seven angels having seven uh, seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God, and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So now, before the plagues, John is given a panoramic view of those that have overcome. They, is, they have overcome the image of the beast. They have overcome the beast. They have overcome the mark of the beast. They have overcome all the influences of evil. So this is what qualifies them to receive the white robes of righteousness. You know, when you go to manuscript release, uh, page 210 says, uh, this is volume, uh, manuscript release 2. Another heavenly angel exclaimed with a firm and musical voice, they have come out of great tribulation. They have walked in the fairy furnace in the world, hated intensely by the passions and caprices of men who would enforce upon them the, the worship of the beast and his image, who would compel them to be disloyal to the God of heaven. But however, even though they were compelled to do all this, Indeed, they overcome the beast. They overcome his mark. They overcome his image. They have defeated the devil with all his temptation. And now they qualify to be welcome to the marriage supper. And as they go to the marriage supper, they cannot go with the garments they were wearing. They need a different garment altogether. Or they will be given this garment of righteousness. Revelation chapter 19 from verse 7, the Bible says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. So what we see in Revelation chapter, 13, Revelation chapter 7, when the angel asks a question, when, the, uh, when this being asks a question, what are these which are arrayed in white? Now they have come from great tribulation. And as they have come from the great tribulation, they have been covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ because this fine linen, the fine white linen, is the righteousness of the saints. So is the righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, what can I do to attain this righteousness is the question. But now before I go to that, but now let's look at verse 18 of Revelation chapter 17, chapter 7, because the question is asked, where does this come from? It says, And I said unto him, Say thou knowest, and he said unto me, These are they which come out of drift, great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So they have come out of great tribulation, and they have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. So the great tribulation 
did not change their character. The great tribulation only exposed what was in their character. All the impurities were removed because of the great tribulation. It says in manuscript release 13, uh, this is uh, 1898. The white robes are the garments of Christ's righteousness, and all who have this righteousness are partakers of the divine nature. They are partakers of the divine nature. In other words, because they have accepted Jesus Christ, they have been given the righteousness of Jesus Christ, then they will be translated. They have become partakers of the divine nature. In other words, in their lives, divinity and humanity have been combined before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have written upon them the name. They have written upon them the name of God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which can which came down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So now they've got the new name of Jesus Christ. It is because they have overcome. As we saw last week, the 144,000, they have got the name of God on their foreheads. Even the great multitude, they have got the name of God in their forehead. The qualification for salvation for the 144 and the great multitude is one and the same. They are to overcome. So whether I will be in the great multitude or I will be in the 144, still I have to overcome. And now it says here, beyond is the great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues clothes with the white robes and palms in their hands. Their warfare is ended. Their victory won. The palm branch is a symbol of triumph. The white robes a emblem of the righteousness of Christ, which now is theirs. So they fought a good fight. They've been given a sp spotless robes. They've gone through the struggle. And in this struggle, they have been successful. Now you realize that struggles are designed to strengthen our characters. Struggles are designed to reveal who we are. And Jesus actually prophesied that Christians will go through a serious time of struggle as they stand for him. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 11, Blessed are you when all men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your, is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which be before them, before you. It is a normal thing to be persecuted as a Christian. It is a normal thing to go through pain as a Christian. Remember, you are living contrary to what the world is doing. Therefore, you are bound to suffer tribulation. You are bound to suffer sorrow in all that we should not accuse God for being unfair, but we should praise God. Blessed are we if we suffer together with Christ. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 14, 22, confirming the souls confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the, the faith and that we we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So we'll go through great tribulation. We must through great tribulation. So it's something which is expected that we will go through tribulation. But however, in this tribulation, tribulation, we are to overcome. The book of Revelation actually gives us a lot of instances. In fact, it gives us examples of the tribulation that we can go through. There are quite a lot of verses about tribulation. As John was writing, he was writing while he was on the Isles of Patmos. He was writing while he was in prison. In verse 9 of John chapter 1, he says, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the Isles of Patmos, called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He's actually saying, I was arrested because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was arrested because of the testimony of uh, the word of God. And he is writing, he is our companion in tribulation. So basically, there are people that have lived before us 
who have been our companions in tribulation, they have suffered as we are suffering. They have suffered as those who were suffering, which were writing, the, which which were reading this letter, and as a companion writing from the place of suffering. This should also give us encouragement that we, if we go through this kind of sifting, it is because of the love of God that when we suffer this way we will also rejoice with Jesus Christ and will be strengthened and all that is nothing to do with God will fall along the way. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 12, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in, in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and for the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has a short time. He has but a short time. The time is short for the devil. What he has decided to do is to bring problems. For he knows the timetable. Because as Jesus was hanged on the cross, he realized that as Jesus said, it is done. Probation for the devil was totally and completely closed. His time was marked. Therefore, he has come down with great wrath because he knows he has a short time. So if you are not a friend of the devil, expect him to terrorize you. If you are not a friend of the devil, Expect him to give you a problem. If you are not a friend of the devil, accept that you expect that you suffer so many things. But blessed are you if you remain faithful and truthful to the word that God has given us. The Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 12, 17, talking about what we are going to experience. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is natural, brothers and sisters, that people will rise against you when you have not done any crime. It is natural, brothers and sisters, that you'll be incarcerated for the word of God. It is natural, brothers and sisters, that relatives and friends will avoid you. It is natural, brothers and sisters, that your loved ones will speak against you. It is simply because we are in this great struggle. In the great struggle, there is suffering, there is sorrow, there is pain, there is disheartening. But this thing should not deter us from the path which God has given us. You know, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, page 31 says, Through trials and persecution, the glory character of God is revealed in his chosen ones. Oh yes, this is what we're saying, is it? That the character of God is, is revealed through suffering. The church of God, hated and persecuted by the world, are educated and disciplined in the school of Christ. Now, when, if we are disciplined in the school of Christ, what exactly is the school of Christ? Because the church of God is hated and then is disciplined in the school of Christ. In other words, they walk according to Jesus Christ. How did Jesus Christ walk? They walked in the narrow path on earth just like Jesus Christ. They are purified in the furnace of affliction just like Jesus Christ. They follow Christ through sore conflicts. They endure self-denial and experience bitter disappointments, but their painful experience teaches them the guilt and war of sin, and they look upon it with abhorrence, being partakers of Christ's suffering. They are destined to be partakers of his glory. Being partakers of Christ's suffering, they are destined to be partakers of his glory. So now when the angels say, when the being says, who are these? They have come out of great tribulation. In verse chapter 15 of Revelation, now they are on the sea of glass, rejoicing, singing the song of Moses and the, and the Lamb because of the experience they have gone through. Now, Revelation chapter 12, 11, the Bible says, And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. Because they loved not their lives in, unto death, they have defeated the devil. They, are, they have gone through great persecution. And in this, they did not change. When you go to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3, we learn the story of the churches. The church through ages. As the church was going through persecution, as the church was going through suffering, the encouragement from God was that be faithful, be faithful, be faithful. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. So the, this was a message to the church of Ephesus. This tree will be eaten 
by those who have entered heaven. When you go to chapter 2, verse 10 of the church which was in great persecution, the church of Smyrna, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer of people. All the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown. And you know, when you go to verse 11, it will tell you that he that is faithful will not be hurt by the second death. Sometimes this tribulation can claim our lives. Sometimes this tribulation, they can take everything from us. But the call is, be thou faithful even unto death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 26, And he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, he to him will I give power over the nations. If we remain faithful, then we'll be given power over the nations. But not only that, chapter 3, verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. This is the experience of those we see in Revelation chapter 12. Now they are wearing white raiment because they have overcome. But they will not end there as they overcome. Revelation chapter 3, 21 say, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even I'm, as I am also, even as I also overcome and am set down with my father in, in his throne. He that is an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say to the churches. You may achieve everything here on the earth, but everything on the earth will come to nothing. But when we overcome, the message to the church of Laodicea is when we overcome, we will sit with Christ on his throne. Blessed are we, brothers and sisters, if we remain faithful, if we can overcome the corruption that is in the world, if we can overcome the evils that is in the world, and one day we'll be found on the platform together with Christ, sitting on his throne as he's sitting with the Father, Paul actually gives this narration talking about the great controversy and how the saints of God went through suffering. It says, And others a trial of cruel mocking. That's Hebrews chapter 11, 36. Others a trial of cruel, uh, of cruel mockings and scourging. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sworn asunder. They were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted and tormented, of who the world was not worthy. They wandered in desert, in mountains, in dens, and in caves of the earth. Why were they wandering? It was because of their desire to stand for God. It was because they decided not to compromise. It was because they remained faithful. And now the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 15, 12, talking about the culmination of this great controversy to those who were suffering. And now they are seen by John in verse 3 and they sang a song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways. Thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Yes, so who shall not fear thee? All nations shall come and worship. Now they are worshiping God. But now where would they come from? This is the most interesting thing that you know. They, the Bible says they have come out of great tribulation. But which way did they come from? Manuscript release page 210 gave this report. They come from the mountains, from the rocks, from the dens and the caves of the earth, from dungeons, from prisons, from secret councils, from the torture chamber, from hooves, from garrets. How did they get there? <laughs> It was because of persecution when their lives were being hunted by the evil one and his angels, when they were running away from their homes. It said they passed, they have passed through sore affliction, deep self-denial, deep disappointment. 
They are no longer to be the spot and ridicule of the wicked one, wicked men. Why? Because Revelation chapter 16, God has already pronounced it is done. The last plague has been poured. The last sin has been persecuted. And now there is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering. It says they are to be no longer mean and sorrowful in the eyes of those who despise them. Remove the filthy garments from, the men, from them and with which the wicked men have delight to clothe them. Give them a change of raiment, even the white robes of righteousness, and set a fair metre upon their heads. No more suffering, no more pain, no more sorrow. All the former things are washed away. And then it says, they were clothed in rich robes than earthly beings have ever worn. They were crowned with diadems of glory, such as human beings had never seen. The days of suffering, of reproach, of want, of hunger are no more. Weeping is past. Because weeping is past, joy has finally come. Brothers and sisters, the saints will go to heaven. The saints will be clothed in white raiment. The saints will be given the best of everything. But it is us to prepare today. And as we enter heaven, brothers and sisters, we will be ranked according to how we accepted the grace of Jesus Christ, according to the experience of the earth. Great Conference, page 665 says, paragraph 2, Nearest the throne are those who were once zealous in the cause of Satan, but who plugged as brands from the burning have followed their Savior with deep, intense devotion. People like Paul, who were very much hell-bent working for the devil, but they turned and they would become very zealous working for God. And then next are those who, perfect, who perfected Christian character in the midst of falsehood and infidelity. People like the world dancers, people like John Huss, people like Jerome, those who honored the law of God when the Christian world declared it void and the millions of all ages who were martyred for their faith, those who lived during the dark ages. And now we say, and beyond is the great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Palm, palms in their hands. That's Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Their warfare is ended. Their victory is won. They've run the race and reached the prize. The palm branch in their hands is a symbol of the triumph. The white robe, an emblem of the spotless righteousness of Christ, which is now, which now is theirs. I'm not sure which group you are going to be in, but blessed are you if you are going to be in any of those groups. The first group, the second group, or the final group. By the way, brothers and sisters, they will get all, oh, they will all have eternal life. They will all be in heaven. So it doesn't matter which group I will be in. But brothers and sisters, remember this. They all have one and the same character. So uh, it's God that will decide which group that you'll be in. But you need to understand that we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It is, they all have one and the same character. And the first important thing is that they overcome sin, just like Christ. Remember 1 Peter chapter 2, 21, For here unto, for even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. So the greatest example that we have is Jesus Christ, the example of overcome sin, overcoming sin. And as we learn from the book of John chapter 14, verse 8, there was no trace of sin in the life of Christ. And even to us today, there should not be any trace of sin. But how can I do it? Remember chapter 12, verse 11 of Revelation, and they overcome him by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto death. So what is the recipe of overcoming so that I can wear the robe of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb. But I want to end with this quotation in Prophets and Kings, page 591. 
the spotless robe of Christ's righteousness is placed upon the tried, tempted, faithful children of God. The despised remnant are clothed in glorious apparel, never more to be defiled by the corruption of the world. Their names are retained in the Lamb's Book of Life, enrolled among the faithful of all ages. They have resisted the wills of the deceiver. They have not been turned from their loyalty by the dragon's role. In other words, they could not be intimidated because they remain faithful. They are now wearing the robes of Christ, white robes. It is important to realize, brothers and sisters, to heaven we shall go. As we shall go to heaven, there is need for preparation. And this preparation is what we do today. How are we preparing? Are we surrendering our characters to Jesus Christ? And accepting the character of Jesus Christ. And when we come to Jesus Christ, we are washed from all our sins. You know the song by Hoffman, by Albert Hoffman, as he was listening, he decided to write this song. Have you been to Jesus for a cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? He was writing this song as he was listening to the message. And then he asked the question, are you washed at this hour? At this, at this hour, my brother, how is your relationship with God? At this hour, my brother, are you clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ? At this hour, my brother, if this hour was your last hour today, how will be? How will it be when Jesus Christ shall return? The stanza says, Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, in the soul cleansing blood? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? My brother, be washed. But you know, there's a stanza which I like most, which is the last stanza. It says, lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There is a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, this is the choice that you make today, to be washed. The great tribulation we will all go through. But it is the tribulation that will purify our character. And when we come out, if we remain faithful, we will have different garments as we enter into the glorious land. This is a home that we've all been prepared for. And blessed are we if we endure unto the end and will be given a crown and white robes of righteousness and will be ushered in the home which God has prepared for us. All these things will come to an end, brothers and sisters, and there is no other better message than preparation to meet our God when he shall return. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Our Lord, we wish to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, to be sure that our names are written in the book of life, to be sure that we have a place in the heaven that you have prepared for us. Let your blessing rest upon us, we plead with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, brothers and sisters, may you be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I look forward to seeing you in the next edition. We are going to progress still on the sixth seal, silence in heaven. And many other things as the Spirit of the Lord lead. Don't forget to share the message. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment. God bless.